Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about friction. So if you take your hands and you rub them together, your hands are going to heat up. If you try slide a heavy object across the floor, you're going to struggle. If you're busy driving a car and you take your foot off the petrol, the car will eventually stop moving. Why? Friction. Friction is something that tries to stop objects from sliding relative to each other. But now we need to ask ourselves, why does it exist? If we look at this diagram over here, and if we look at anything in real life, if you look at it from far, the shapes look perfect. The road looks extremely flat, or a table looks completely smooth. However, if you take a microscope and you zoom in very closely, or even if you just take a close look with your, with your normal eye, you will notice irregularities. And so the surface on a microscopic level actually looks like this. And so we can see that on a microscopic level, due to those imperfections, the table and the, or the box and the table are going to get in the way of each other. And so it's going to be difficult to slide that object across the surface. That is friction. Friction is that thing that tries to stop objects from sliding relative to each other. So this is friction. Something that's really, really cool about friction is the following. Let's say someone comes along and they exert a force of 10 newtons to the right, but the box doesn't move. Why? That's because of friction. Okay, so then how much would the friction force be? Well, most of you watching this would say 10 newtons. Because the force applied and the friction force are both 10, the object doesn't move. So let's say the person increases their force to 15 newtons and once again the object doesn't move. Well, that means that the friction also has to be 15. And so guys, how are we going to get this object to move? What happens is, is that two surfaces have a, they have a point or they have a maximum point that they reach. And if you can make your force applied more than that, then the object will move. So let's say that this object has a, or when you have this table on this surface, let's say that maximum point is 17 newtons. So what would happen then is the maximum friction that that object could ever have will be 17 newtons. And so if we exert a force of 16.8, the object will still not move because then the friction will be 16.8. But as we said, each type of situation has a maximum friction point, and that has to do with the weight of the object, but it also has to do with the types of surfaces that we are dealing with. So we said that the maximum for this one is 17 newtons. So if we can increase this force to let's say 18 newtons, now here's the question, what would the friction be? Well, we just said that this particular system has a maximum friction of 17, meaning that it can never, the friction can never go above 17. So if your applied force is 18 and your friction force is 17, then the object will move. And so that is the most important thing you can take away from this lesson is that an object or a, let's call it a system rather because you have the object such as the table and then you also have the floor. That system will always have a maximum point that you need to go past in order to cause the object to move. For this particular system, that was 17 newtons. And so if you only exerted 15 newtons, then how much was the friction? 15 newtons. So it's quite cool how the friction can match you all the way up to 17. So on a graph, it would look like this. And so let's try plot a graph. So if you don't exert any force on that box, then how much friction would there be? Well, there would be nothing. Because think about this. If no one is exerting a force on that object, so there's zero newtons, then there can't be any friction. If there was friction of like 17 newtons, then according to physics, the, the overall force would cause the object to start sliding to the left. And we know that that doesn't happen. If an object is resting on a table, it doesn't just start sliding randomly by itself. So if no one's exerting a force on it, then there's no friction. And so your starting point will be zero and zero. Then I added another 
row in this table. So if you apply 5 newtons, then the friction will also be 5 newtons. And that is why the object does not move. You can see we've got 5 newtons and 5 newtons. You can't say that, yeah, but Kevin, you said that the friction is 17. No, we said that that object can have a maximum of 17 newtons of friction, but it doesn't mean it always has 17 newtons of friction. Friction is a very interesting thing. So if you then go up to 10 newtons, then friction will go up to 10 newtons, then 15 and 15, and then eventually you get to, okay, no, first we get to 16.8, then friction would also have to be 16.8, so that will be somewhere over there. Then I just added 17 newtons and 17 newtons. So, so if you can then exert a force of 17 newtons, then the friction will be 17 newtons and the object will, that, that friction is like literally giving up. It cannot hold anymore. That object is about to start sliding. Now, I've actually made a small little mistake. Well, not a mistake. It's something I haven't explained to you guys yet. Have you ever noticed that when you're trying to push a very heavy object, let's say you've tried to push a car before. Now, is it more easy to push the car when it's standing still? Or is it easier to push the car once it starts rolling? Well, I'm hoping that 99% of you would say that it's easier to push the car once it's already rolling. So what happens is that objects have a friction when they are standing still, and they also have a different type of friction when they are moving. When they're standing still, we call that static friction. And then once the objects start moving, then we call it kinetic friction. And guess what? Kinetic friction is always going to be less than than that maximum static friction value of 17. And so if you can go to 18 newtons, then the friction is actually going to drop to kinetic friction. And so the, let's say that's about 14 newtons. So let me explain that once more. When an object is not moving, you will need to increase the force until it can start moving. For this particular object, that was 17 newtons. Once it starts moving, then it becomes a lot easier, and so the friction becomes kinetic friction. And that's always going to be lower than the 17. And let's say for this particular object that that is 14. What's nice about kinetic is that it doesn't increase or decrease. It just stays 14 the whole time. So if you then have to exert a force of 20 newtons, that stays 14 uh, newtons and it's still moving. So you're on a graph, it would look like this. It would, your force supplied and your friction would increase together like that. Then you would reach the maximum point, which is at 17 newtons. Once you go beyond that and you keep increasing your force applied, then your friction will drop down to 14 immediately like that and then it will stay 14 for the rest. So let's do a quick little test, guys, because I know a lot of what I might have said might not have made a, that much sense. Uh, maybe you did understand it the first time, but very often you won't understand things the first time, but let's do a quick little test just to clear any confusion. So let's say that for this particular system, each system is different, but for this particular system, the maximum friction is 17. And so that is the largest amount of friction that this system can have. If you exert a force larger than that, then it will move. Let's say that once it's moving, then we go to the kinetic friction, and that stays 14. So here's the little test, guys. If we have a force of 12 newtons, will the object move? Or let's first say, what will the friction be? Well, friction will be 12 newtons, and the object will not move. Because remember, if you exert 12 newtons over here, then the friction will also be 12 newtons. Okay, if you exert zero newtons, then friction will also be zero and the object will not move. If you exert 15 newtons, then the friction will be 15 newtons. You might be saying, Kevin, but that's more than 14. Yes, guys, but remember the object's not moving yet. To get it to start moving, you have to go beyond the 17. Once it's moving, then we can start looking at the 14. So this object will still not move. Then we exert a force of 18. Aha, so that goes beyond the 17. And so the object's going to start moving straight away. So the friction 
drop straight into this area here which is called kinetic friction and so it's 14 and so yes the object will move if you exert a force of 30 newtons then the friction stays 14 once it's in this area it stays constant that's why it's a straight line that is flat so yes the object will move and if you exert a force of 40 newtons it will stay 14 and so I hope that you guys can understand that each type of object has a maximum point that it can get to and that's this point over here to get the object to move you have to go beyond that otherwise it will not move so if you exert five uh, five newtons then the friction will be five newtons if you exert six newtons then the friction will be six newtons but if you can get to beyond 17 newtons then the object will move and then the friction will stay 14 newtons so that's all for this lesson in the next lesson I'm going to go into this a little bit more and I'm going to show you how you can calculate the static friction and the kinetic friction so like the 17 and the 14 because I just made those numbers up but there's ways that you can calculate that so thank you for watching